You are welcome back. If you have watched the previous video, when we discussed about uh, the, the two sorts, the one that is forming the residue and the one that is forming the filtrate, you agree with me that we have lead carbonate that is forming the, resi the residue. Lead carbonate is the one forming the residue. So the question can proceed further by saying residue, residue plus, because we need to dissolve the residue as well, residue plus uh, HNO3. So remember, there are three different acids that you can use, but it's only HNO3 that is, that will form a visible reaction. You know, you can use ACL or H2SO4. ACL will not be visible with this kind of reaction because of the interference of chloride ion. Likewise, uh, H2SO4. We cannot use H2SO4 for this kind of reactions too because of the interference of lead to sulfate. So because of that, because we are dealing with, you know, our residue is lead to carbonate. Because of this acid, there is going to be an effervescence. Effervescence of what? Effervescence. Effervescence of a colorless and then odorless gas. Please note that. Make sure you put the word gas there. Effervescence of colorless and odorless gas. That is one mark. Which turns lime water milky? Which turns lime water, lime water milky? Evaporescence of a colorless and odorless gas. Which turns lime, lime water milky? And that is a, that gas is, the gas is what? The gas is carbon-4. And we can only get carbon-4 from CO3 to minus. We can only get carbon-4 from CO3 to minus. So we have described one physical properties of carbon-4, and that is colorless and odorless. That will fetch you one mark. Then we describe one chemical properties as well. The chemical properties we have described here is that it turns lime water milky, and that one will also fetch you another one mark. Then you have the, the, the gas we have just described now is carbon-4 from CO3 to minus. So right now, it, it is no more a residue. We are not dealing with residue again. We are dealing with aqueous residue or residual solution. Residual solution. Please take note of that statement, residual solution. So this residual solution, we now add sodium hydroxide in drug. Sodium hydroxide in drug. Sodium hydroxide in drug. Mind you, you've already have the glimpse of the cations we are working with. So if you add sodium chloride in, I mean sodium hydroxide, we have sodium hydroxide in drug, we are going to have a white precipitate. White precipitate. Please don't write PPT, white precipitate. PPT can mean property white precipitate. And because of this white precipitate, there are two ions, there are two cations that give ordinary white precipitate, provided that you are not eating. So we have white precipitate like calcium Ca2+, or Pb2+, is present. Is present. These are the two cations that give ordinary white precipitate. Other cations that also give that also give a precipitate, it is gelatinous. Those ones are amphoteric. Like when you are talking about aluminum and zinc, those ones will give a white gelatinous precipitate. But in this case now, this one will only give a white precipitate in drop. Now in SS, in SS, this is the theoretical aspect of this practical. We are going to do the real practical in the next class. Okay? In SS, precipitate does what? Dissolve. Precipitate, precipitate dissolves. Another word you can use here, instead of saying precipitate dissolves, is that you can say precipitate soluble or precipitate disappear. Do you get it now? But right now, let's make use of precipitate dissolve. Immediately the precipitate dissolve, automatically we are going to we are going to say Pb2 plus is present. If the precipitate is soluble, or the precipitate remains, it means that we are equally testing for the presence of a 
Ca 2 plus, which is calcium ion. Now, the question has asked us to divide the residue into portions. Let's say we have treated the first portion, and then we are now treating the second portion now. The second portion, the residual solution, second portion, we add aqueous ammonia, aqueous ammonia, aqueous ammonia in drop, aqueous ammonia in drop. Definitely, we are going to observe a white precipitate as well. If the reagents are good, if the reagents are good, or if the reagents are in good condition, these are the results you should have. If you, if you observe another result, contrary to what you are seeing on the board, it means that the reagent is weak or the percentage impurity of that reagent is very high. So that can interfere with your result or you are using a bad water in mixing your reagent. So that can also interfere in the result you are going to have. So right now, if we add aqueous ammonia, we should have white precipitate. And note the word, white precipitate. So because I'm putting the word white precipitate, definitely we are going to, uh, our inference should be CA2+. plus. See the way I'm writing my own CA2+, plus. you should follow the same thing. Or PB2+, plus is present is present. That is in drop. So if it is in SS, in SS, in SS, the white precipitate remains. White precipitate, or you can say precipitate remains. Let's just say precipitate. Precipitate remains. Or precipitate insoluble. Precipitate remains or precipitate insoluble. Definitely, it is still PB2 plus is present because the only one that can give us precipitate, ordinary precipitate. And then aluminium is insoluble in aqueous ammonia. It is aluminium that is insoluble in aqueous ammonia. But aluminium will form a white gelatinous precipitate. Like I said earlier, in the next episode, we are going to see uh, the practical uh, test for all this experiment. So right now, we have treated the second portion. Let's now say that the question asks us to divide it into third portion, and then we have to add ACL, hydrochloric acid. So if you are adding hydrochloric acid, so let's assume that the question says we should divide it into third portion, third portion, and then we have to add, we have to add uh, ACL. The essence of adding ACL is the confirmatory taste for lead. So if you have to add ACL, then you eat as well, or warm, eat or warm. In your observation, what you are going to have is that a white precipitate dissolves, white precipitate dissolves on eating, white precipitate dissolves on eating and reappear and reappear on cooling and reappear on cooling automatically what you have just done there is that a pb2 plus is confirmed is confirmed because it is only pb that can exhibit such a distinctive characteristics the reason for adding ACA in the first place is just to form lead 2 chloride what you are going to the resultant effect of ACL is to form lead 2 chloride. And lead 2 chloride is soluble on eating and then insoluble when cool. And that is why we have why precipitate dissolves on eating and, and the white precipitate reappears on cooling. It reappears on cooling. Automatically, PB2 plus is confirmed. So from this test now, we've been able to identify lead 2 ion and CO3 ion. Because that's the first one we confirm from the beginning of the reaction. In the next episode, we are going to consider how to test for uh, the anions, which is NO3 minus. Thank you.